another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today marks the first episode of StarQuest Health. So basically what that is, is um, me going to help, you know, different StarQuest owners get their cars on the road, more or less. So we're going to roll the, uh, the footage and uh, take it from there. Okay, today on StarQuest Help, we're here with a good friend and he requested to get some valve stem seals done and also the steering shaft. So I'm gonna show you guys where that mystery uh, death wobble comes from. So basically after you replace all of your uh, tie rods, inner and outer, next is the actual steering shaft. But before we get to that, we have to finish up these valve stem seals. So I've already completed six of them and I have two more to go. I didn't wanna bore you guys with the details, but um, this is the tool we're gonna to be using, a spring compressor. And from O'Reilly's Auto Parts, we were able to get the valve stem seals. So it comes with all eight and uh, we were able to get that. And this is an 89 Conquest TSI. Um, I don't know whose manifold that is, but uh, you know, um, stock injectors, first generation Eclipse uh, Turbo MAF. So that's good there. You get a little bit more air that way. And then got a fuel pressure regulator. And from what I understand, this uh, this specific vehicle hauls butt. So we're going to uh, jump on this and get it going. So um, you're gonna want to rotate the engine uh, by hand or by starter, either way, whichever's fastest. Take a screwdriver with your spark plugs out and put it in here gently. You don't want to scratch anything. And if it goes very far, that means the piston is not to TDC, which is top dead center. So uh, I just finished this row. And as you could see right here, you could feel the top of the piston. So that's what you want to feel. So when you take and compress this and remove the locks, you wanna make sure that um, you don't drop a valve because if it goes in there, you're not gonna be able to get it out unless you take the head off, which is a couple more hours of work. So to avoid that, you make sure that the piston is at top dead center. So when you take the locks off, the valve doesn't go anywhere. It sits you know, calmly on top. It doesn't slam it, it doesn't uh, damage anything. It just lays on top and with the spring compressor tool. So you take this one and you see they're unevenly uh, placed because the spring is not exactly circular or excuse me, not circular, but um, even spring on both sides. So you're gonna want to get this down on some springs. Then you wanna grab both sides cause the black part has the tendency to slip off. So that's very important. So you grab both sides and you start tightening. We're going to uh, add in a shoestring into the spark plug hole. Remember, she's at top dead center. You're adding in the, the shoestring as extra cushion and also to hold the valve in the closed position. Now, you should be able to get away with using a pair worth of shoestring, which is uh, two shoes. But if you feel you need to add more for any reason, definitely feel free to add more. And then once that is in there and complete, we will compress the spring 
and we will remove the locks. So I'm going to compress the spring and I'll be right back. Okay. And with the spring compressed, you use a small flathead and you're just going to of course there's going to be two of them one on each side but you're going to take a small flathead and um hopefully it has a magnetic tip that definitely helps and you're just going to slide it out like that okay and with the spring off it exposes the valve stem seal so you're going to take some pliers and you're going to tug at this for a little while until it pops off okay and just like that it pops out and you're going to want to take this seal and you're going to want to lubricate it just a dash of oil to make sure it's not put in there dry then you bring it over to this valve slide on and then take a socket socket 12 millimeter deep put it on top and push all right now that is on and tight all right, so now you reverse the process. Take your compressed spring, put it on top gently. You don't want this to pop in your hand. You'll have a spring shooting in your face. And for obvious reasons, you know that's not fun. So, our locks and if you look at them, let me see if I can zoom in on this really quick. All right, so if you look at them, the locking collar is at the top and then it's tapered off at the bottom. So it stands in just like that. Tapered to the bottom and locking collar at the top. And both of these meet together like that around the collar and once that's together it is locked so we're gonna put these in one at a time Let's see if I could there we go all right first one going in you're gonna want to play with that until you get it out of the way all right perfect all right so lift up the valve There we go, and that is locked. So you do that seven more times and all of your seals will be replaced. And then before we let this go, we're gonna counterclockwise this and we will see the ending result. All right, and that is the finished product. So let's look across because it's easier. So that is the new one, that is the old one, and it is that simple. So we're gonna get this uh, last one out and move on to the steering column. Okay, so now we're gonna put the rocker assembly on and FYI, just so you guys know, this plug is in backwards. It's supposed to be that way facing out so turn that around 
and we're going to seal this up. Okay, with that put in the proper way. Now remember on these top bolts, you don't want to over torque them. You wanna put them down at a maximum of 15 foot pounds. So you're gonna do a sequence as if you're bolting down the head. So you're gonna start from the inside and then work your way out. And then last, you're gonna bolt down the last two back there. Okay, so on the cover, you're gonna take out your hood latch, which are the two screws here. It would be down here. And then there's a screw behind this cover, which would be right there. And then on the opposing side, which would be right there. So you pop out the cover there. Then you got four screws for the column, two in front, two in the rear. So it'd be under here. And then this item, you twist off counterclockwise and that's perfect. So all of this comes down. And then next, um, you're gonna get the two bolts up under here, one and two. And as you can see, once the four screws are taken out there, it comes right out of that plus shape thing. Right down there. And then all you do is unplug all your accessories. Okay, excuse the glare. So with pretty much everything detached except this aftermarket red wire, we have this piece. So from the factory, it comes with a uh, rubber bushing type. And of course, over time, that ends up breaking. And then you have the play between each square. So the other piece is still onto the, the gearbox. So I'm gonna show you guys where and how to remove that. So, That piece is located directly under your brake master. So you're going to get your arm back here if you can. It's not gonna be an easy task. And I definitely can't get the camera on there, but you see where my finger's at right there directly above up under the brake master is the remaining half of the shaft. So, let's see, it's one bolt on there and you have to turn the wheel in order to access it. So we're gonna put the steering wheel back in the shaft and we're gonna turn the whole unit to, let me see, seems like it's aimed towards the driver's side. You have to get it to aim towards the passenger side. So we're gonna turn it to the right, probably like a half a turn. And that should get the bolt in a position you need it to be in. Then you'll be able to slide it off. So let's do that and take it from there. Okay, so you're gonna wanna go around till it's upside down and turn it to this position here. That seems a perfect spot. 
and the bolt is facing this way. So now you get a 12 millimeter, go from the bottom or top, whichever one's easiest for you and take it off. Okay, so this is the part that bolts on after you take the 12 millimeter out and has a slit in the shaft to make sure you can only put it on one way. But anyway, on this side, if you take a look, this goes on, and this is the play you have in your steering wheel. So, there's a couple ways of going about this. You can get a U-joint adapter that goes on here for an umpteenth amount of money. Or you can do um, what I'm about to do, which is remove all of the rubber and reseal <clears throat> this joint using something called window welder, which is really stiff or um, something like that to get rid of this slop. Okay. So I am going to do that. And yep, this should be good to go. you guys enjoyed that and find it very informative um uh we're gonna let the uh and we ended up using um jb weld quick fix cheap whatever but anyway um so we have that drying and then i'm going to head back over to that car and finish it up and uh yeah, we'll take it from there. I'm going to have him, uh, you know, test drive it with the um, the new steering component sealed. And we'll see how he likes it. And then after that, we're going to change out some factory inner and outer tie rods and he'll be good to go.